Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. Welcome back to Sunday Morning and the Old Cookbook Show. Today we're going to do a recipe out of this cookbook, Caruso Recipes for Spaghetti, Elbow Macaroni, and Egg Noodles. This was published in 1940 in Long Island City, New York by the Atlantic Macaroni Company. And the first bunch of pages are all about the story, the history, how macaroni, spaghetti, noodles in general came to Italy in the 13th century and sort of the process that it took along the way for it to be accepted and then become sort of part of daily life. Um, it's a very interesting book and I want to thank the viewer who sent this to us. I, I really, really love these little cookbooks put out by brands and that tell people how to use their products. Um, doesn't reflect recipes the way that the community cookbooks do. The community cookbooks tell me more or less how people were cooking. This tells you how the corporations wanted you to use their product, and the truth is really somewhere in the middle of how people actually ate. But one of the things I find really interesting about this book is that it's filled with recipes for spaghetti and macaroni um, that are not traditional Italian recipes at all. Uh, there may be one or two in here that are traditional Italian recipes, but most of them are what I would call Italian-American recipes that reflect the immigrant experience of not just Italians in New York, but that whole melting pot idea um, that the United States is known for. There's a lot of recipes in here that use noodles in very innovative ways. Um, very interesting ways, and I think this might be a recipe book that we'll come back to and do a few recipes over the next year. Um, I'm kind of intrigued by a bunch of them. The one we're going to do today is called Spaghetti Aquatania, and it's one of those recipes that's not really this thing or that thing, and I've, I've had a hard time sort of figuring out what the lineage is, and it could completely just be something that's made up um, altogether. So we're supposed to cook the spaghetti. And it's very interesting, this book was published in 1940. A lot of cookbooks from this time period would have you cook spaghetti for 25, 35, 40 minutes. Like just boil it to the point where it's falling apart. The instructions for cooking spaghetti in this book are much cl more closely aligned to what we would cook today. It says 12 minutes. So, okay, I'm gonna say spaghetti is done. So we'll get it out of here drain it and into this bowl. Now it seems like a pretty simple assembly from this point. This is going to be a baked spaghetti. Um, so we start out with two eggs and we crack those right into the spaghetti. Egg number two. Next up Ask for well-buttered breadcrumbs. So I've got a bowl of breadcrumbs here and I've got some partially melted butter. So we'll just mix that together. Okay, so put those in. Now it asks for one cup of cooked diced carrot. So in that goes. One cup of cottage cheese so um, it also says I have to put all these ingredients in in the order that they're listed and I often you know wonder if that's completely necessary in this instance I don't think it is I think you could just dump everything all in here together you could probably put all the ingredients in the bowl first mix it up and then add the spaghetti um, not really sure though Next it asks for three quarters of a cup of top milk. Now, I had to do a little bit of digging. Top milk is not something that I had come across before um, in any cookbook. This is the first time I'd come across top milk. Turns out top milk means cream, because it would, before homogenization, um, this is the 1940s, before homogenization, cream would rise to the top. You would buy a quart of milk or a gallon of milk or whatever you bought in the glass bottle. It would arrive and the cream would have risen to the top because it wasn't homogenized. So, here we go. Three quarters of a cup of cream. 
Next it asks for minced parsley or green pepper. I have green pepper. I have green pepper, so I'm going to use green pepper. And what this tells me is that the flavor doesn't matter because green pepper and parsley taste completely different. They just want you to have a green component in the dish. Uh, next in is salt, trying to follow the order here. And grated onion. I didn't have onion, so, um, well, no, I shouldn't say that. It's such a small amount of onion. I didn't want to grate part of an onion and stick the rest back in the fridge. So I'm cheating and I'm using a shallot. It'll be fine. It'll be absolutely fine. It might be probably even better than, than onion. And the last thing is minced pimento. So in with the pimento and we give this a mix. So I've just got some tongs and this is pretty much the reason why I, I think that um, mixing all of the ingredients first and then adding the spaghetti to sort of like a sauce would have been much better. You probably would get this mixed together a lot better than I'm going to this way. Probably, of course, getting in there with your hands would be the best idea. Coming together in the end, though. Coming together. Okay, now, I've got a well-greased loaf pan. I'm supposed to transfer this to the loaf pan and then cook it 45 minutes in a moderate oven. Get a spatula, get it all in there. Now, it says to unmold onto a serving platter, so. Oh. Now, it says to garnish with pecans, almonds, and walnuts, chopped fine, and I'm supposed to sprinkle. Is that pasta? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't, I, don't, I, I don't know that I've ever had a, a pasta ca casserole kind of thing. Spaghetti Aquitania. Okay. Okay. I so. mean, it's spaghetti with sauce, spaghetti, like, uh, whatever. I'm in. The nuts I find interesting, but okay. Yeah, the nuts, I'm not, I don't know what's going on with the nuts, but, you know, we'll give it a shot and see what happens. It's like a very lovely terrine. <laughs> Yes. You know what I mean? If you added some yep. spinach and stuff, you'd have all sorts of extra color and it would just be very pretty. Okay. I shouldn't ask all these questions. I should just taste it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, really, how's it any different than <laughs> most people do with mac and cheese? It's mac and cheese. It's a kind of mac and cheese. Okay, so it's, I mean. In the usual, I would throw in like some beans and. Yeah. Um, so it's not, it's, it's not a cheese sauce. It's, okay. It's cottage cheese mixed in with a couple of eggs. And so, I mean, it's relatively plain because you saw what we put in it. Not a whole lot of flavorings. Um, and some of the flavorings that were put in, like there's green pepper in here. Okay. But it said to use green pepper or parsley. So it just wanted to have green bits. Mm. There was no other. Well, because, I mean, mac and cheese in its basic form is just, you know, cheese, milk, a little flour, like a, a roux mm. with some cheese mm -hmm. and milk, right? So. I like this. I like this. Mm -hmm. I can see myself eating this. It's comforting. It's, it falls into one of those comfort foods, warming, and not challenging. I don't know if I can explain that thought process. There's something just not challenging about it, and you eat it, and you go, I want more. I mean, clearly, I'm still snacking on yeah. mine. It's warm. It's, yeah. You know, you could put some herbs in it. You could definitely put some spicing in it. You could put some beans in it if you wanted to put some protein, or you could put in some crumbled ground beef if you wanted some protein or in it, but it doesn't, or whatever. It doesn't yeah. need it. It really doesn't need it. I know out of habit, because it's a, what, my bias, is I would probably throw, throw some sriracha on it, but I also do that with mm -hmm. most of my mac and cheese. Even my homemade mac and cheese, that's, you know, my thing. Ketchup. Definitely ketchup. A little bit of ketchup on the side would be great. Okay, so, spaghetti aquatania. Why not? I think it's pretty good. Um, I think as a base recipe, it's pretty good. I'm kind of enjoying it. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.